From Apple's iPhone Assistant Siri to the mechanized attendance at Japan's first robot-staffed hotel, female personas appear to be overrepresented in artificial intelligence systems. But why is femininity injected into robots? Artificial intelligence appears to have a gender problem, as evidenced by the proliferation of female robots such as Sophia and the popularity of female virtual assistants such as Siri, Alexa, and Cortana. In this video, let's find out the real reason behind the popularity of these female humanoid robots. This gender imbalance in AI is a pervasive trend that has sparked outrage in the media because it may reinforce stereotypes of women as objects. If we are to reduce the widespread use of female gendering in AI, we must first better understand the underlying causes of this phenomenon. Let's try to understand that, but before that, for everyone who is new to the channel, hello and welcome to Robot Future, where we fill you in on every thrilling discovery and mind-blowing insights in the world of robots, AIs, and future technology. So consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification for a ton of exciting robot content coming your way. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. In a paper published in the journal Psychology and Marketing, we argue that research into what makes people human can provide a fresh look at why feminization is so prevalent in AI. We contend that women are more objectified in AI than men, not only because they are perceived as the ideal assistant, but also because people attribute more humanity to women in general. Why? Female gendering of AI objects contributes to humanizing them because women are perceived as warmer and more likely to experience emotions than men. Warmth and experience are seen as essential qualities for being a full human, but they are lacking in machines. Using dehumanization and objectification theories, we show that women are perceived as more human than men, both overall and when compared to non-human entities, in five studies involved over 3,000 participants. Female bots have more positive human qualities than male bots and are perceived as more human when compared to both animals and machines. Female bots' inferred humanity raises the perceived uniqueness of their treatment in a health context, leading to more favorable attitudes towards AI solutions. Other measures, such as asking respondents how much emotion they attributed to male and female bots, captured more subtle and implicit perceptions of humanness. Some emotions are said to differentiate humans from machines, while others are said to differentiate humans from animals. While women and female robots are perceived as more human on the majority of the subtle and all-blatant and implicit measures of humanness, men and male robots are perceived as more human on the negative dimensions of the subtle measures of humanness. Taken together, these findings show that female robots not only have more positive human qualities than male robots, but they are also perceived as more human and are more likely to consider our unique needs in a service context. These findings may point to a new possible explanation for why people prefer female intelligent machines over male intelligent machines, with people preferring female intelligent machines because they are more strongly associated with humanity. If femininity is used to humanize non-human entities, this study suggests that the key to treating women as objects in AI is to recognize that they are not. The popular assumption, known as the dehumanization hypothesis, is that outgroup members must first be viewed as animals or instruments before they can be objectified. In other words, dehumanization would be required for objectification to occur, with objectification targets typically being denied their humanity. Contrary to popular belief, women may be transformed into objects in AI not because they are perceived as subhumans, but because they are perceived as superhumans in the first place. According to Martha C. Nussbaum, objectification entails making into a thing, something that is really not a thing. It also corresponds to Kate Mann's perspective on misogyny and dehumanization. Often it's not a sense of women's humanity that is lacking. Her humanity is exactly the issue. As a result, the widespread use of female identity in AI artifacts may be rooted in the implicit recognition that women, more than men, are perceived to be human. This study expands on what distinguishes humans from machines in order to better understand the underlying causes of AI's widespread female gendering. We argue that female gendering of AI objects makes them look more human and more likely to consider our unique needs because feelings are at the heart of our humanity and women are perceived as more likely to experience feelings. Are you enjoying watching the video? Please like this video and subscribe to the channel as it gives me motivation to create more videos like this. However, by conveying the idea that women are objects and simple tools designed to meet the needs of their owners, this process of transforming women into objects may lead to women's objectification. This could lead to more objectification and dehumanization of women in the non-digital world. 
This study highlights the ethical quandary that AI designers and policymakers face. Women are said to be transformed into objects in AI, but injecting women's humanity into AI objects makes them more human and acceptable. These findings are not particularly encouraging for the future of gender parity in AI, nor for the elimination of female objectification in AI. The development of gender-neutral voices may be a way to move away from the female gendering of AI and prevent the perpetuation of this benign sexism. Another solution, similar to Google's recent experiment, would be to impose a default gender voice, randomly and with equal probability assigning users to either a male or a female intelligent bot. I believe there is a pattern here, said Carl Frederick McDorman, an India University, Purdue University, Indianapolis computer scientist and expert in human computer interaction. I don't think there's one simple answer, McDorman told Live Science. One reason for the overabundance of female artificial intelligences and androids could be that these machines perform jobs traditionally associated with women. Many robots, for example, are designed to serve as maids, personal assistants, or museum guides, according to McDorman. Furthermore, many of the engineers who create these machines are men, and I think men find women attractive, and women are okay dealing with women," he added. Siri is perhaps the most well-known example of AI today. The name Siri means a beautiful woman who leads you to victory in Norse, and the default voice is Samantha, a female American persona. According to an Apple spokesperson, Apple purchased Siri in 2010 from the research nonprofit SRI International. Siri's voice can now be set to be male or female and in a variety of languages. McDormand investigates how men and women react to voices of different genders in his own research. In one study, he and his colleagues played clips of male and female voices and asked participants to fill out a questionnaire indicating which voice they preferred. The researchers then administered a test to determine people's implicit or subconscious preferences. The men in the study stated that they preferred female voices, but there was no implicit preference for them, whereas the women in the study implicitly preferred female voices over male voices even more than they stated in the questionnaire. I believe there is a stigma for males to prefer males, but not for females to prefer females," McDormand said. Is there a similar trend toward female personas among humanoid robots? The chances of a disembodied voice being female are probably slightly higher than the chances of it being male said Kathleen Richardson, a social anthropologist at University College London in England and author of An Anthropology of Robots and AI, Annihilation Anxiety and Machines. However, when it comes to fully humanoid creations, it's almost always male, and when humanoid robots are female, they are often modeled after attractive, subservient young women, according to Richardson. Hiroshi Ishiguro of Osaka University, for example, has designed some of the world's most advanced androids, including the Replie R1, which was based on his then five-year-old daughter. Ishiguro also created the Replie Q1 Expo, which was inspired by Ayako Fuji, a female newscaster for NHK, Japan's national public broadcasting organization. Ishiguro recently designed a series of Actroid robots for the world's first robot-staffed hotel, which were manufactured by the Japanese robotics company Kokoro. The droids, which resemble young Japanese women, will serve as receptionists, waitresses, cleaners, and cloakroom attendants, according to The Telegraph. Female AI personas can be found in fiction as well. In the film Her, for example, Scarlett Johansson plays an artificially intelligent operating system with a seductive voice. Her human owner, Joaquin Phoenix, eventually falls in love with her. What does the current trend of creating beautiful, flawless female robots say about society? I believe that reflects what some men believe about women, that they aren't fully human beings," Richardson said. What they need can be replicated, but when it comes to more sophisticated robots, they must be male. Another reason for having female robots, according to Richardson, is that women are perceived as less threatening or more friendly than men. The same could be said of cute robots. Hollywood's portrayal of robots, such as in The Terminator and The Matrix, makes them appear frightening. However, if we designed robots to look like children, we might be able to make people more comfortable with them," Richardson said. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. So, why do you think female humanoid robots are popular? Let me know in the comment section. The best answer will get a heart react from me. Please like and share this video. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.